What's up, YouTube? Robbie Vapes back again, and today we're going old school. So stay tuned. That is right, YouTube. Today we are going old school. All right, I love you guys hanging long enough, but now probably about half of you guys have actually double checked the link you clicked on to make sure this was the right video. And yes, this is a review on the Cleto 120. It's not the device that's old school, it's actually my review format. Now some of my original subscribers may remember back in the day on my original content, I did something a little bit more unique in my review style. And I kind of sh shied away from it over the last probably year or so almost, and I've changed my review style since then, but I wanna try this again to see what you guys think, and if you guys think this is a great format to do. Now I will admit the reason why I shied away from this old school format is because well, there's a lot of reasons. Let me get into what the format is first before we get into the reasons why I haven't done it recently. The format goes like this. The first section is the introduction, the second section is the down and dirty section, and the third section is the conclusion. Sounds like every other review I've done in the last six months. True, but the difference is the first and second section were always filmed together initially the very first time I got the product. The fourth set or the third section, the conclusion section, was always filmed weeks after that. Then I put them all together in one video, which is what you're watching now, and basically it would become one video, which actually spanned not just a day or two of review, it was a full one, two, or even three week cycle, all in one video, so you got everything, my first impression, my initial thoughts, and then re really basically my overall conclusion after using the device for so many weeks or so many days or whatever it might be, depending on the device it was. This particular device, the Cleto 120, I'll be using for a minimum of one week, and I'm actually hoping to do it for more like two or three weeks. Now, going back to what the issue was and why I shied away from this format is because it's a lot of work editing. It's also a lot more work trying to keep track of the videos I'm recording now and making sure I don't lose them three weeks down the road when I do their final segment, because that's always an issue. And I actually had a couple reviews where I did it in that format, lost the initial footage because I couldn't find it, didn't save my computer, I saved my computer, or I couldn't, had too many files to go through, and basically recorded the entire review again. And after doing that two or three times, I decided back then that the best way to do it was all at once. So I had all the filming done all at once, and then I'd go to my computer right away, edit it all together, and publish it on YouTube. So, with that being said guys, um, this device, by the way, was given to me for no charge from economyeastics.com. He is actually out of Calgary, but he does ship anywhere he wants, um, anywhere in North America at least. I'm assuming he'd ship elsewhere if he really wanted to, but he does have a website. I will have it in the description below. Make sure you go check it out. The guy's a great guy. Any of my local fans here, or local friends, I should say, you're not really fans, you're more friends to me. Uh, any of my local friends probably know him already, so I'm sure they can vouch for him in the comments section. Um, but that's pretty much all I want to say. So with that being said, let's get down and dirty with the Cleto 120 and let's do a true first impressions. All right, YouTube, we are down and dirty with the Aspire Cleto 120 with a true first impression look. Now here's packaging over here. You can still see the seals are in fact intact. I have not opened this at all. This is truly a first impression. We're gonna take a look at the box or the packaging very quickly first off. Very simple packaging. You also have all this good stuff on the back here. Just go through. And if you want to pause it there, hopefully you guys can read that if it's in focus, and I really hope it is, but it is a little bit difficult to get away from the glare. At the bottom here, 120 watt tank king, scrumptious flavor, scrum diddlyumptious, controlled airflow, instant massive vapor. Not just delayed massive vapor, it is instant. All right, enough making fun of it. Let's open up the box. Overall impressions on the packaging is actually a little bit more unique. I like the fact that it's unique. I'm kind of getting tired of seeing the same packaging for tanks in day in and day out, looking the exact same, and maybe I have to take off both. I don't know why it's not just popping over like I usually would, but that's okay. Take that little plastic thing off, put it off to the side, and I think I just resealed this side, which is perfect. All right, we may have a little packaging malfunction here, and it looks like, no, it's down there. So why is this so difficult to open? Is there another seal somewhere? I don't see one. All right, so this, oh, there we go. Let's just break open the box, basically. All right, so up top, we actually have the Cleto tank itself. I will take a look at that close up in just a moment. Put it off to the side for now. Going into this little flappy area, flappy area here, 
we have a warranty card here. Now one thing I like to check for warranty cards is what the warranty actually entails. And basic limitations of warranty are here. So important notice. We also have a little warning here. I'll get to that in just a second. Um, but I don't really see an actual warranty on this, like a day warranty or you know how long the warranty is good for. I'm really just seeing uh, a whole bunch of information that doesn't actually give you any information about warranty. So that's, I don't know, a little bit of a downside for me. But uh, going over to here, it's Power Cleto 120 rating and usage reminder. While Cleto 120 is rated at 120 watts, it can easily handle 160 watts and higher. All right, we'll be testing that out for sure. Adjust wattage accordingly to your particular e-liquid's characteristics and your own vaping preferences. Important. When using the atomizer for the first time, make sure to let the e-liquid wick until the cotton is fully saturated before firing. This should take around two to three minutes according to e-liquid thickness. This will ensure your atomizer does not burn out. All right, we will be doing that. We're following all the instructions here just to make sure that there is no way we can actually have a complaint saying we did something wrong. We have the spare glass in here as well. Looks relatively clean other than my own fingerprints on it. No chips in it, which is a good sign. And that just goes in here. You also get a little vape band. Hashtag fight to vape. All right, guys, leave that in the comments down below. Hashtag fight to vape. I like it. That I actually approve of. Then you have your big ass massive coil here. If I can get this bad boy out. Let me see if I can maneuver it. There we go. Look at that thing. That thing's got teeth. Oh, would not. No, you know what? I'm going to go there. Anyways, all right. So here we go. This is the, oh, that is the wrong side. Aspire Cleto 120. There we go. There's the resistance. 0 0.16, 100 to 120 watts. We will also be testing to see if it can go below that and how well it vapes below 100 watts. Because you never know. Maybe it vapes really well at 60 watts as well. And in, in that case, it opens up a whole new market for this tank. So something to keep in mind. All right. So we have everything down below there. You can kind of see it. Decent wicking holes or decent wicking slots. Not too bad. Airflow looks okay. It looks a little restrictive from what I've seen from massive coils like like uh, 100 plus wattage. They usually have a little bit better airflow, but we'll see if that's affected in the actual review style. And when I come back, you know, a couple weeks from now. But other than that, everything looks good. These orange kind of bands around it, the O-rings or the seals are really something different. Um, I'm not used to seeing that, but... I don't know. We'll see how it looks. Put that back in the packaging, put off to the side, and let's check out the main attraction, the tank itself. All right. So here we go. Here's the tank. Again, another coil in there. Let's see if we can find the resistance on this one as well. Same thing. So you do get two of the exact same coil, both of them being the 0.16. Hopefully I can eliminate that glare there for you guys. 0.16 ohm coil, 100 to 120 watts. Exact same as what we just saw. Let's unscrew this. I'm assuming this is top fill. Just unscrews nicely. Oh, yes, yes. Anyone who's watched my review on the TFE 8 knows my biggest gripe was a filling, and I'm going to be able to fill this bad boy no problem with a 140 mil, which we will do in just a moment. All right, let's screw that bad boy back on, get that together. There we go. All right, you got the airflow down here, and uh, it doesn't look very wide, but it'll be interesting to see how it actually vapes, because I've seen this before where the airflow looks a little bit cut off, and it's actually vaped and it actually has plenty of airflow for the vape. Um, and in fact, if you have watched my review on the TFE8, and I'm just comparing it because I did the review like a couple days ago, um, at least as a, as a recording of this, but uh, by the time you watch, it's probably a couple weeks ago. Anyways, I actually keep my airflow. In fact, I have the TFE8 right off to the side here. You can see here, my airflow is only about two thir or a third of the way to half the way open. And uh, why that is, because having it full open is just too much for me. I prefer a denser vape and having it wide open just provides a wispy vape. So this may still be a good sign for me. Moving on to the pin here. Looks to be gold plated if I see that correctly. Hopefully I can get it to focus. There we go. Looks to be gold plated and uh, definitely not safe for hybrid use. So please do not use this on hybrid. Yes, it does stick out a little bit, but not enough for my comfort zone or for really anyone's comfort zone. At least it shouldn't be. Let's take it apart. We'll prime the coil up as we're trying to, oh, I hate this. Why do they do this? All right, guys. Um, one of the things I don't like already is the fact that it just keeps spinning. I really prefer airflow rings that have a stopper in them or something. So it's easier to take that bottom piece off. It's not too bad. Actually, there is some grip room here. Now that I think about it and I'm actually starting to unwind it, I think. 
No, I just unwound the top. See, and this is exactly why. Okay, this is different. What is going on here? So it looks like it does have a small fill hole. There's a small fill hole down there. I think I took the top off wrong. So again, it's just all stuck together here. I'm not even sure if I can take this out. Oh, there we go. Now we got net. So the actual fill hole is that little fucker. That is not going to work for me. Honestly, that's not going to work at all for me. I, I will not fill using that. I will take the whole thing off if I have to. I refuse to fill in that little fucking hole there. All right, so. <sighs> Let's see. Take the coil out. Just check everything. There's the uh, other part of that 510 pin down there. And again, everything looks good in there. Looks pretty clean. Uh, I don't see any mis uh, machining issues or anything like that, so... I don't usually look for those anyways. I mean, to be honest, unless there's something like extravagantly bad about it for machining wise, I don't really care about that stuff. It's cosmetic anyways. I mean, if you really worry about something like that in a review, that's kind of not my style to be honest. But anyways, we will prime the coil up putting, oh, it would help if we opened it. There we go, it's open. All right, so we're gonna prime the coil. Just put a little bit along the sides here. just to get that cotton soaked up a little bit. And it looks like we have, how many do we have, three? Yes, so we only have three wicking slots. Um, not a bad thing, I've seen high wattage tanks perform with fewer wicking slots, but uh, I was expecting four for some reason. All right, next portion of this, we're gonna pour just a few drops in here. I'm gonna try and hit the side here, and I'm worried about these blades coming up because it might block my priming ability. Sorry, hopefully I can get this on camera. A little bit hard to do while I'm trying to watch. Again, I'm trying to hit the side so I get the cotton and it's not just going straight to the bottom and flooding the air holes, which is not what I want to do. All right, now that we've, we've primed it up, probably we may have even over primed it. I wouldn't be surprised if stuff leaks from the bottom there. So far, it looks okay. If we can see the airflow holes, I don't see anything coming out of them, which is a good sign. Let's put it all back together, put the glass on first. Let that go right there. Put this uh, top part on here. Screw it right back on. Actually, you know what? Don't put the top part back on. I'm gonna fill it with just the glass on. It's just got an O-ring seal right now. Um, so it might not be super secure, but that's the way I'm gonna fill it because there's no way in hell I'm filling it through that little tiny hole that was on there. All right, so we just fill it up with our 140. Should be good. Leave a little bit of room at the top. A little bit of a gap there, if you guys can see. Not the best angle to look at how much is left over, but I will show you once it is all put back together. Screw that top part back on. Screw this back on. And uh, I'm going to check the drip tip too, just to see if it's actually a standard size drip tip, but it actually looks to be built into the top cap. I don't think I can take this apart. No, I can't. Although, because it's built in, it's actually turning easier to get just the top piece off and not the entire top. So see what I mean? You can actually get back to that slot if I use the drip tip to spin it as opposed to trying to grab it from the knurling, which is kind of kind of counterproductive. The reason you have knurling on there is so you don't have to worry about, you know, grabbing from anywhere else. Knurling is meant to be like a guide for your fingers to just kind of fit in there and just twist off. And here you're better off using the, the mouthpiece here or the drip tip. All right, so that's pretty much it. As you guys can see, I did leave some room there. We're gonna let it sit for, uh, let's say five minutes to be safe. So we're gonna double the recommended time and uh, then we'll start vaping on it. And again, I'll be back in probably about two weeks, give or take, uh, with my final thoughts on this thing. So I will see you guys soon. All right, guys, we're back up top with the Cleto 120. And I just wanna give my final thoughts really quickly on this thing, just give you guys my overall impression. I've been vaping on this thing for over two weeks now and I have a really good idea of what I feel about it. And before I get into that, I want to clear up one thing. The airflow on this, it looked a little bit smaller in the first presentation kind of thing that I did a couple weeks ago, which you just watched. But surprisingly, it's actually quite airy. In fact, so much so that I have it turned down to only a quarter of the way open. And that is perfect for me. It's not too, it's not too airy, but it's also dense enough where you get the flavor out of it, the best performance out of it, and all that good stuff. Now, going back to performance, let's talk about that for a bit as well. The big thing with performance on this thing is the break-in period. The break-in period on this coil was about two tanks worth, 
maybe a little less than that, give or take kind of thing. And the break-in period on this is really, really tough. I gotta be honest, it alters the flavor of the juice, it doesn't taste completely right. But that being said, I want to mention this. Once you break in the coil, it is a night and day difference from the taste, the flavor, from what you had during the break-in period and what you have once it's actually broken in. And there's a few factors that come into play when breaking a coil. First of all, you start the coil off at a lower wattage. And I think that's what majorly caused the issues. Anything below 100 watts in this tank, it just doesn't seem like it really fits in with, with what you're looking for. The flavor tends to be either muted or distorted a little bit. And I just find that the best way to vape this tank is in that 100 to 120 watts, which is exactly what they recommend. That being said, I refuse to break in a coil at 100 watts. It's got to be lower than that. you got to work your way up gradually, and that's how you extend the life of your coils. If you do that and you do it properly, there is no reason you can't get up to two weeks out of this coil. I got about 12 days out of mine, vaping up pretty constantly, about three tanks a day for 12 days, and I had great flavor from it after that first little break-in period, of course. But I had great flavor from it. I enjoyed the vape. I thought it was a good dense vape as well. Once I turned that airflow down a little bit more, and it was just exactly what I wanted out of this tank. That being said, is it for you guys who are sitting there vaping at 40, 50 watts? Probably not. Honestly, I think there's better tanks out there in that wattage range, especially when you go with the Spire. The Triton is a great tank in that 40 watt range, 40 to 50 watt range kind of thing. This one is clearly the attempt from a Spire to get into that 100 watt plus market for the sub ohm tanks. And I think they achieved it pretty nicely. I think it does compare to the Z-Pal Coral. I think it does compare to the TFV-8. No, it's not going to go through juice, you know, a bottle of juice every two hours like the TFV-8 does, but it has better fill holes from the TFV-8, which is a big plus in my books. Um, no, anyways, apart from all that, let's, let's you know, put that aside for now, a comparison. Let's just talk about the tank itself and who I recommend it for. I definitely recommend this tank if you're looking for a 100 plus watt tank. It can go up to 140. I didn't have it there very long. I had it there just to see what it would reach. It hit 140, no problem, no dry hits, no burnt taste, but I didn't keep it there. And I think if you do keep it around the 140 range, or really even anything above the 120 range, I was dipping mine at 117 watts on the Relo RX two thirds, or two out of three, or two slash three, whatever you want to call it. I'm getting off topic here, but you get the point. I was dipping 118 watts, and I got just shy of two weeks out of the coil. If I was dipping 140 watts, I think I would only get maybe five to seven days out of it. And, and I just think that's how it goes, right? The higher wattage you vape, especially with the speeder juices, which is what I use, you're going to find the coil is going to last a little bit less time than what it would with, say, you know, 100 watts. It's, it's obviously increasing the coil. It's going through the juice faster. You're running through tanks faster. And because of that, it's going to just basically end up cutting up the coil life a little bit shorter every time you jump wattage. So with that being said, the overall question is, do I recommend this? And I say, yes, I do, if you are in that 100 to 120 watt range. If you are not, if you're in that 50 watt range, if you're in the 60 watt range kind of thing, I don't recommend this. I think it's a little bit too high powered, and it really does need that high power or the high wattage to get that flavor out of it. Anything below 100 watts, you're going to lose out on flavor, you're going to lose out on taste, and it's just, I don't think the coil was built for that below 100 watt range. So with that being said, if you're okay with getting through that break-in period, you will be rewarded heavily with good flavor, good vapor production, and overall just a great experience for vaping from a, a sub ohm tank. Aspire doesn't usually let you down. They haven't this time. I think they're in the market. I think they're competing very well with their competition. And like I said before, if you have the ZPAL Coral, if you have the TFV8, and you're looking for something a little bit different, maybe you don't like the fill hole like I don't in the TFV8, maybe you don't like having to go through juice as much as... as as what you do in the TFV8, this is a great substitute that still goes over 100 watts and performs very nicely. Now, just want to say a big thank you again to Economy eSigs. They are the ones who provided me with this, with this tank for this review. And uh, if you want to go check them out, there is a link down in the description. Thank you guys all so much for watching. And until next time, happy vaping, YouTube.